Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about the ellipsoidally referenced dynamic draft model, or ERDDM. This is something that comes up every year during our hydrographic systems readiness review and can sometimes confuse people. So to start, let's look at each of these words individually. The ellipsoid is a smooth approximation of the Earth's surface that is used as a reference surface for survey work, with GRS-80 and WGS-84 being commonly used ellipsoids. The term dynamic draft encompasses those changes to the ship's static draft due to squat and settlement when the vessel is moving through the water at different speeds. Squat is the change in the angle of the vessel's waterline with respect to the water at different speeds, while settlement is the sinking of a vessel into a temporary trough created by a buildup in water pressure all around you. Finally, this is a model since, while we can measure the distinct ellipsoid to antenna values with respect to speed and time, we don't have those discrete values to enter into the Keras HVF for each exact speed that it asks for. We need to take those data points and build a model that allows us to fill out that table. More on this later. Now that we understand what the ERDDM is, how do we go about getting these measurements? And how do I know if they are any good? Well, the first thing you should do is check out the Field Procedures Manual section 1.4.2.1.2.1 on dynamic draft measurement techniques specifically the post-processed kinematic GPS section. When it comes to acquiring ERDDM measurements, there are some things that you need to keep in mind. One, you really need to understand the tides and currents of the area that you are working in, as these affect the distance from the ship's antenna to the ellipsoid. Two, you need to get data for each speed you might conceivably use to survey. And three, you should include rest periods in order to see if there was a change in tides or anything else that could cause a vertical offset. The FBM will give you a guide for running the ERDDM lines. Basically, you want to acquire pause data and run a survey line in flat, calm water. You'll need to get about five minutes of pause data before starting. Then, try to get two to five minutes at each speed with a one to two minute rest period between each speed. Speeds should include anything from bare steerage to 10 plus knots at intervals of about two knots. When you finish, you'll need to turn around and run the same test in the opposite direction to see if you get a big difference due to currents. Once you get your data, you'll run it through POSPAC, generate an SBET, and then use the SBET in a tied file within the PIDRO PROC SBET dynamic draft macro to generate your curve. Congratulations, you now have a model for your vessel's dynamic draft, but is it a good model? Well, let's look at some example outputs to get a better understanding. Here, we have the ellipsoid height versus time and speed over ground versus time images from two tests on the same vessel. Note that the image on the left clearly shows the time period during the test, while the image on the right shows a much longer time. You'll want to include just the data during the ERDDM period, but the image will show the entirety of the file anyway. Also, notice that there is a sort of organic looking gradual increase in ellipsoid height on the right image. This could be attributed to tides not being applied. The left image might have the same problem, but it would be much harder to tell since it's a much shorter time period. You want to make sure and apply tides. Here, instead of ellipsoid height versus time, we are showing ellipsoid height versus speed. With both images, we can see that the majority of the measurements fit within two standard deviations of the best fit line, and that two standard deviations is on the order of five or ten centimeters. And looking at the left image, note that it kind of looks like there are two separate but identical lines with a bit of a vertical offset between them. This might be attributed to tides again. On the right, we see that there is some kind of anomalous point throwing the rest of the data off. It might be worth checking out the pause data here in the PIDRO Auto QC tool. At this point, we should probably take a moment to explain the difference between third and fourth order best fit lines. You should all be familiar with the phrase polynomial equation, right? Well, if I just had a straight line or first order function, it probably wouldn't fit the data very well, as the best fit line probably needs to have a curve to it. If I had a parabola or a second order function, it might get us closer, but not quite right. What probably fits best would be a third or fourth order function, also known as cubic or quartic functions. In the end, we are just trying to find the equation that matches the data. If the third order fits best, use that one. You might find that either option works best, depending on the circumstances. And finally, we have the delta draft versus speed data, graphed and in a table. What we see in both images is that as the speed increases, the boat tends to lift up. So what should we be expecting here? Well, there were a lot of variables at play. 
It depends on the vessel, placement of the GPS antenna, and many other factors, including whether or not we ran the test correctly. As long as you looked at all of the things that we've been talking about, you're probably on the right track. Compare what you have now to previous year's data. Does it line up? Have you always run the test in the same spot each year? What happens if you run it somewhere else? Keep some of these questions in mind and feel free to contact HSTP if you need advice. It might save you some heartache. Thanks for watching and good luck out there.